Are we back? Oh no. Well, that's unfortunate. There's always got to be something, right? Let's see. Is anybody back in here yet? Unbelievable. Oh boy. Let me change all these URLs and everything. Thanks, internet connection. God. Gotta love it. All right, there we go. Things are back up and running. Oh, that's annoying. I wasn't even paying attention. I was just having a conversation with nobody and probably for way too long <laughs> before I even noticed. So let's get the ball rolling here again. That's unfortunate. I really wanted just one long consistent stream that way people could go back. But uh, yeah, okay, well. Let's let's start over from the top, I guess. Then, my name is Braden. You're watching Rocket Vlogs. This is the build of a AMW FiberMax. Yes, someone in the comments, John four sixty one, just asked if that's what it is. It is indeed. Um, I've been sitting on this kit for probably two years, and uh, finally, finally getting around to building it. I actually bought and built the Big Daddy before I got this thing out of the box and actually built it. It might be more than two years if I'm honest. I can't remember. Um, my dad bought it for me for Christmas a few years ago. Well, two years ago at least, I believe. I can't remember. going to be pulling a bit of a stunt here assuming I have enough epoxy left over but uh, dang that's unfortunate we had 23 people we were having a good time so thanks for coming back if you're back and if you're new thanks for popping in if you guys could do me a solid hit the like button that uh, does a lot and we might get thrown into you know YouTube's recommended for live or whatever and Maybe Rocket Vlogs can get a good kick, and then we can get some pretty crazy projects going. We've got n no shortage of crazy project ideas between me and the guys that, uh, if you're familiar with my channel, you've seen our nonsense in the past. Uh, we've got we've got plenty plenty of thoughts that don't have funding, so. More subscribers, more viewers means more opportunity, right? So who knows? Maybe uh, maybe we can get there. My goal for the end of this year is to hit 50,000 subscribers. It's a pretty lofty jump from where we're at right now, but I don't think it's an impossible one. So what I, what I meant when I said a little stunt here, as long as this top sending ring epoxy is dry... We're going to go ahead and just glue this guy in place. But I might have just mixed a big batch of epoxy for no reason because that's still a little tacky and I don't really want to risk that. I'm pushing the ring in crooked instead of actually gluing it in place. So we'll give that about 45 seconds. Um, if you guys missed it, I gave you guys a little bit of a tour of my 
rare hardware pile over there you can see but uh now it's gonna be two separate videos which is a little bit annoying but uh failure is always an option right never expect things to just work <laughs> so while we're here Drop in the comments what you're working on this winter, what you're flying this winter, whatever you got. If you have any questions for me about this rocket or any of the nonsense in my rocketry collection or flight plans for the upcoming year, let's let's have a chat. Because uh, usually I'm just kind of sitting here building a rocket and now I've got you guys. Potentially, anyway. Let's see what's going on. Is Pachi starting to tack up yet? A little bit. Let's see if we can get it in without that. Yes, of course. Just put my finger right in the wet epoxy. Tango Papa two times Mars lander. That's pretty cool. I do love a good Mars lander. I'm not super huge into like sci-fi themed kits and stuff like that, but there are exceptions that of course being one you have to like the mars lander if you like rockets it's just like offensive to be against it um the vega i like a lot too they're super vega um yeah interceptors are cool the swat stuff like that but um yeah my mainstays are kind of scale stuff or you know I really love upscales, as you guys are probably aware if you watch my channel. Got a 4-inch Red Max, got a 6-inch Red Max, here's a 4-inch Big Daddy as well. Um, I really thought about buying one of their 5.5-inch Big Daddies too while they had them out. I had a 5-inch Goblin, sold it to my dad. My dad still got that, so that's in the work as well. Working on seven and a half inch upscale Big Daddy with carbon fiber wrap and lock MMAS. That reminds me, I have a seven and a half inch upscale Big Daddy, or uh, no, no, uh, Fat Boy. Taylor is building a seven and a half inch Big Daddy. Should be able to fly on a two grain CCIM. Oh, that's rad. Two grain 98. That's super cool. Finishing up my four inch lock goblin for my level one attempt next week. Next, I assume, I don't know. Next, next is what you wrote, but uh, awesome good kit and good luck with your cert that's an awesome one to do it with you just playing a little bit with fire with those fins um so oh yeah let's talk about that for a second let me read out what's what's going on here jacob cook getting my three inch punisher ready to fly tomorrow on j500 nice that's a good motor and a good rocket the best rocket some people might say like me um the three inch punisher is just a godsend it's great you fly it on a you can probably fly it on Spicy H, but you can definitely fly it on a K or an L. Taylor put an L1090 in his, and now I feel like I'm also obligated to do so, but I had my K1275 flight. That was pretty cool. Building an SC's original Mars Lander, scratch building a two times Mars, a Mars Lander. That's super cool. But yeah, so the reason I'm not doing internal fillets, my cousin Shane, uh, built one of these attempted as level two with it and the flight was perfect it was his first time doing head-end dual deployment everything went exactly as it should have uh right up to the point where it landed and um it wasn't undershooted it was just maybe a little bit on edge but at any rate it hit in idaho the one spot that wasn't sagebrush and was just hard and there was rocks so it snapped one of the fins off the motor tube which wouldn't have been so much of an issue but the internal fillet um then tried to come through the airframe tube and just destroyed it around the fin slot so it would be a matter of cutting out that section of like a good probably three quarters of an inch of airframe past the slot pull the fin out glue the thing back in and then run glass cloth over the top if you really wanted to salvage it and that's a uh, pain so um certain rockets are just prone to breaking fins off whether or not they have internal fillets and these fins are only eighth inch so i'm not going to be able to push it very hard despite it having a 54 millimeter mount so uh it's just weight 
It's just added weight on the wrong end of the rocket, and uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it there. Doesn't need to be there. Hope you guys can hear me. By the way, I kept the mic over here so that's sort of out of the way. Um, but when I'm talking to the camera, hopefully you can hear me okay. But yeah, so that's that's my explanation. No, no internal fillets. Um, that epoxy starting to tack up, so we just kind of made a huge batch for no reason in particular. But let's see if this wants to go in with some convincing. Or we're gonna have to do some sanding. I think it's gonna be okay, actually. Hey, it is nice. Love it when a plan comes together. Okay. Well, while we're here, we're going to make sure all these fins fit. And based on the size of those slots, I'm going to go ahead and say it's not going to be anywhere near close. At least that slot in particular. Oh, no. Okay, we got one. It doesn't quite fit properly against the motor tube. Okay, that's interesting. This one is the same story, and this fin slot is too thin to get a fin into. So, I guess uh, we'll get this ring glued in, or get this motor mount assembly glued in place, and then uh, we'll start dealing with that ordeal. Uh, I should have checked that, because I, I sanded everything beforehand so that you guys wouldn't just have to sit here and watch me sand the whole time, but... That would have been a good thing to check. So actually, no, I'll go ahead and glue it in. Well, let's try and just open this guy up a little bit with some 120 grit sandpaper to see what's up. And then we can run some more denatured alcohol through it. Audio is great. Good. Hopefully it's not uh, just all sanding noises now. I can see the width of the, the bit that cut this and where it stopped and should not have. Okay, let's see. It looks like it cleared it out pretty good. Alright. Foam core emery board works great for widening thin slots. Oh yeah, that's a good tip. So close. Yeah, I'm right up the middle there. All right. I, that's a good idea, though. I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. I do also have no shortage of power tools for doing this. I just, I'm sure that sanding sound is really good for you guys, as is. I don't need to be firing the Dremel up. There you go. What I might have to fire up though is the belt sander because of that massive gap between the motor tube and the uh, roots of the fins. 
wouldn't be rocket blocks without a bunch of sanding. Yeah, you're kind of right. That's what we do around here. It's the sanding channel. Let's see. Throw that in there. I'm thinking about getting a Wild Man Dark Star Jr. What's your thought on that? That's a good rocket. I used to have one uh, back when it was just the Dark Star. The uh, the two inch was like the the Dark Star, the only one for a while, or at least the introductory one. And then they had the Extreme Dark Star, and then the Ultimate Dark Star. Um, speaking of which, my dad and I have an Ultimate, whoa, ultimate Dark Star. And we have a motor for it too. We just, uh, Tripoli, Idaho, we didn't get a lot of launch opportunities this year. Just some weather and we got BLM issues and all that. And almost every launch weekend, me or my dad or both of us were out of town. So, and we built that rocket together like over 10 years ago. So, we're, uh, we prefer to have us both be there to fly it. But we've got an M1550 for it, and that should be a pretty good flight for it. I'd love to put an N in it at some point, but especially with recent price increases, N motors are crazy expensive now. And I've already made a couple N motor purchases um, for next year. So those, again, uh, those who are on my Patreon will know what those end motors are for. Let's see here. All right, so we're gonna glue the motor mount in and then we're gonna deal with the fins not going all the way in afterwards. Be a good project while the epoxy dries. Uh, gotta love it. It wouldn't be a build if there wasn't some modifications and refinement necessary, right? You'd just be assembling a high power rocket. This, uh, the manufacturer of this rocket kit, not AMW, but the primary manufacturer, um, has some notoriety for parts that don't fit very well, particularly fin slots that don't fit very well. Uh, you made that Arcus, the fin slots had to be widened a good bit. I also had to trim those fins down though because I made it a 98 instead of the 54 it came with. So that's not really uh, their liability. Uh, the Fat Boy manufactured by the same person. Fin slots had to be very modified. You know, these things happen. All right, I'm gonna eyeball that. Keep my thumb there, and then try and I'm coming late. Are you launching this weekend? I am not. It's 30 degrees. I'm working on a Lexus this weekend, and sitting inside where there's heat. Winter is the off season for us here in Idaho. Although, uh, from what I understand, Tri-Cities up in Washington uh, flies in the winter. So, um, I've been meaning to check out one of their launches. And my friend Bryce is going to be flying with them now, so... I might have to venture up there. Try and get this epoxy. I made like what could be considered just barely enough. Kind of getting a little, a little on edge though. Let's 
since we're not doing internal fillets, I do want to make sure it's going to be sufficiently attached. But that should be enough. Yeah, that's plenty. Make sure we don't block the fin slots. station make sure everything's coated make sure we don't block the fin slots no Kevlar no Kevlar a little bit of Kevlar there we go get the wing close to the slot but not blocking it no Kevlar no Kevlar no Kevlar boom look at that done deal All right, so now what are we going to do about these fins leaving eighth inch gaps? I don't really want to sand them by hand. I have a belt sander. That would make quick work of it. It just would be unfortunate if I went a little too far. But uh, I also don't really have a way to keep the stream going with that you guys will just have to kind of sit here while I do some belt sanding which isn't exactly the most riveting content to produce yeah, it's still pretty snug there it goes. yeah I don't know how well you guys can see that let me show you there's a pretty big gap there that's a, a tad annoying At least it's consistent across all of them. So what we're probably going to do... Oh boy. For the sake of not pulling my hair out and having to do this by hand, I think we're probably just going to go ahead and go to the belt sander. I should have done this with uh, this different streaming platform I have. I could have sent you guys... To another video. Maybe I still can actually. It'd be kind of fun if I could uh, queue up. Maybe a sneak preview of the uh, double header for this weekend. all these fins together get the roots all lined up and then it's just a matter of going to the belt sander just a couple seconds blasting that clean what material are the fins fiberglass the whole rocket is fiberglass as a matter of fact um, I actually think that's the end of the five minute epoxy segment here and the rest is going to be CA and West Systems Epoxy. Let me see if I can do something here. Get a little experimental. It would be way nicer if I had uh, my dual monitor set up right now. But we're going to try something. I'm gonna Oh, come on see if I can't get you guys a sneak preview going oh boy gotta love YouTube struggling over here Let's see if this will work. I am going to mute my speakers for now. That way you guys don't get it going twice if this is going to work. All right, let's see. 
window capture. Is that working? Oh, I think it is. Awesome. So let me pull up my phone and make sure that's working how I think it's working. And I'm just going to cut somewhere to the middle of this. And you guys are getting a sneak preview of the video that's coming out um, on Sunday. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go hit the belt sander. And uh, yeah, enjoy your couple sneaky minutes of the fail compilation, part two. just going to set it down right outside my office door so let me mute the mic here for a second you guys are going to get not full screened again for a sec here but uh yeah
That's a good teaser place to stop, huh? Welcome back! If you want to see the rest of that, you're going to have to wait till Sunday or um, you can see the whole thing on Patreon right now. So I took a good dent out of it with the belt sander, but what I'm going to do is finish it by hand. It's close. They're just a funky shape. And it, I almost would have to like put a weird slant down on the the shape of the of the fin tabs, tangs. I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Um, but yeah, so I just I don't know. I the backs are touching now, but it's just uh, weird. So we're just going to sand it by hand a good bit and we'll just get as close as we can and if there's a little gap left we'll just fill it in with epoxy here in a little bit when we go to do the fillets. So if you're wondering why I keep coming down here to sand it's because there's a towel down here that I can just take all of the, uh... wait what's happening, why do I hear myself? There we go. Mr. Sandman, sand is a dream. Yeah. Yeah. No shortage of sanding gets done around here, that's for sure. I thought about just doing the old setting it down and scraping it around thing, but I just don't think it's as efficient, if I'm honest. The old 120 grit does put in some pretty good work in terms of removing material. But uh, this process is definitely a lot messier than the alternative. So I think we'll just give it a few more seconds of some good sanding and whatever cards are left we'll deal with. I wish I had a mask with me. They're all at my parents' house now from working on the Honest John. Wear a mask when you say and stuff, guys. Especially fiberglass. Don't do what I'm doing right now. Um, yeah. I think we're just going to call that good. Why'd I do that? I have the liquid alcohol to clean stuff up with right there. Now instead I'm just putting a bunch of fiberglass dust in the air. Imagine. Okay. There's a garbage can over there, I promise. It's gonna be itchy later. I think there's probably still going to be a decent gap, but like I said, the fillets will hide it all. It's fine. I definitely have some pretty gnarly gaps under some fillets. Oh, made that one a bit of a funny shape. That's alright. Again, this rock is not going to get pushed very hard. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to fly it on. I don't think I have a motor for it at the moment. Sanding a Wildman Mach 2 as we speak, per your real video on their site, it says screw less than I drop to 80 degrees to take out the big mistakes. Uh, wait, what are you sanding? Fillets? The, um, I never know what it is. It's like 150 to 220 grit or something. It's like the ideal, um, ideal grit sandpaper for the best composite bond yeah there's still a pretty big gap there but that's 
That's just how it goes sometimes. These are some big funky fins to try and get on straight, so this is going to be quite an adventure. Move the mic a little bit, that way I can sort of have this thing sitting still. Kind of keep my eye on it. Bob Smith, CA, ladies and gentlemen. Go, go, go. Thick CA. These fins are so thin. We might have to sit here like this for a second. Good amount of time. Maybe more than a second. See, I'll, I'll show you that gap. Because that's sitting down properly. I don't like that. The nice thing about CA is... If it's not where you want it, you can just break it free and try again. Oh, the epoxy fillets, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely admit to having to go to some pretty heavy sandpaper from time to time to fix some fillet mistakes. We've all been there. Don't feel ashamed. I'm gonna give that some time to tack up and I'm gonna do the forbidden CA touch with the bare finger just so I can get these puddles out of the way because ironically CA takes forever to dry if it's a puddle that looks straight to me see now the other ones are going to be interesting to try and get straight because I'm not going to be able to put it right here because the tube's so short it's just going to fall off so this is going to get interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Let me do the forbidden bare finger touch. They're also uh, quite wobbly just because they're so top heavy. Oh, denatured alcohol on the rag. Perfect. Get these puddles out of here, and that way we don't have to try and sand those out before we do fillets. But, uh, yeah. pretty dang straight so I'm probably just gonna have to hold it for the next ones but let me give you guys a look at this gap if I mean I've belt sanded it it feels like nothing changed hello I don't like that but make sure we got Okay. Belt sander made it worse somehow. No, it was I didn't quite have it seated where it needed to be seated when I was showing you guys earlier. They're just like I said, it, it's like I would have had to sand a angle into the fin tabs if I wanted them to sit right. CA accelerator, I don't have any unfortunately, but that's all right. That's pretty on there. And if it breaks off, it breaks off. Sometimes that is how things go. Somebody sent me a Facebook message. Let's see what's going on. I'm just checking out my phone, I guess. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to let that tack up for just another second 
so what I'm going to do with the uh, fillets, I have this rock epoxy tint. Um, so my dad got me for Christmas or my birthday or something, the accompanying decals for this thing where you don't paint it, you just clear coat it. So uh, I don't have to worry about painting it, which is awesome. So I'm just going to uh, tint some wet systems, do all the fillets at once, and then let them start to tack up a little bit. And once they're a little bit tacky, I'm just going to put a rubber glove on, dip my finger in denatured alcohol, and get them as smooth as I can. And however co they come out is how they're staying. I don't care. This thing is just for funsies. We can trust the fin to hold it in place like that. CA's no joke, dude. Yeah, look at that. The problem solved itself. Make sure this guy fits before we put CA on there. Everybody's favorite sound right there. The old chalkboard fingernail sound. So... Some of this going. And some of this. Maybe even some of this. And we'll slide that baby in. need just a little bit more room for my chair to slide back. Just a hair more. Let that hang out. Get those puddles out of here. Looks pretty straight. How's this content for you guys? Riveting? It's like watching paint or glue dry. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Shouldn't have moved it. I had it in the perfect spot. Oh. Such a weird Friday for me. I'm never like out on weekdays, but I went and saw Bill Burr last night, so it was a, uh, it feels like a Saturday, and like tomorrow's my last weekend day, so Sunday, this weekend is going to be just like a bonus for me. And speaking of bonuses on Sunday, tomorrow, the first installment of the fails video is coming out, but because it's build slash bomb the channel with content December, Sunday is part two. But, uh, so yeah, no, no building suspense for a week between the two parts on that guy, like I do with the launch videos, as a bit of a holiday gift, and, uh, if you guys want to help support the channel, check out patreon.com slash rocketvlogs, where you can see the whole 30 minute thing in one video, uncut, with no ads. Or, you can do the super chat thing, you can do donations on live streams, I kind of forgot about that till somebody sent me sanding beer money the other night. So that was pretty cool. But uh, at any rate, if you just want to watch and you don't want to give me your money, that's fine too. I'm glad you're here. There's a little bit of like a sticker or something on this bin. I'm just going to sit here and peel it off while we give that CA a little time to situate itself. getting heavy fast. In my head it was going to be light enough for a J90. I don't know about that. Might be a bit optimistic. But hey, a little optimism never hurt anyone, right?
Man, CA is great, isn't it? Okay, this one should be pretty set. Yeah, that's pretty straight. Is this going to work twice is the question. No, it looks like we're out of luck on that one. Okay. We need a solution. I think... That might be all we need. That looks pretty straight. That'll do just fine. Look at that innovation. Zoom in a bit more this way. Thank you. Test fit before we glue as usual. Cool. Bob Smith is the man. Love that guy. Best adhesives in the game. Well, I can't be doing my boys at West System like that. Best affordable adhesive in the game. That's like my number one. When people ask me how to get into rocketry, like affordably, and I, you know, I always recommend wildman stuff because anymore like jumping straight into fiberglass is pretty affordable when I was dreaming about fiberglass kits when I was younger it was you know Hawk Mountain which was anything but affordable but now with you know full ready to go fiberglass kits like that journey sitting there for under two hundred dollars with a parachute and a shock cord how can I not recommend going straight to fiberglass although there is something to be said about the classic cardboard and wood it's just very or phenolic especially phenolic just has a certain smell to it that's super satisfying for some reason so I was having a really good time with the honest John That looks pretty straight. Oh, super glue some paper towel. What is the big millennium case you've got on the table back there? That is a 9815360. Yes, the holy grail of <laughs> collectible hardware. Here. Since you asked, we already uh, we did it in the first edition of this stream, but since we have it for the second one, I'll pull it out again. It's uh, especially special in my heart because it says Gates Brothers Rock Tree right there. And it was my uh, dreams as a young teenage rocketeer was to build some Gates Brothers style stuff and now we're doing it which is pretty crazy to me it's, I also showed it's got a little bit of pitting I don't know if you can see it in there very well but uh, there's some pitting from where the AP wasn't uh, cleaned out it wasn't cleaned out after it was flown very well so it's a little pitted but uh, whatever happens happens right and uh, as I teased before, Patreon knows about it, but there is a flight coming to Airfest 2023 that's using this case and another loaded 15360 case for one flight. It's going to be pretty crazy. Not to mention this spring at Cloudburst, us, the anti-gravity group, are giving the 12-inch Punisher another shot. On the same motor combination, we ordered the four motors that we burned from Wildman. So we're doing, again, N3300 in the middle, 3L1520s and 3K1000s. It's going to work this time. All seven motors will light. It's supposed to be a touch off of Mach, which is crazy for a 200 pound, 16 foot tall rocket. 
And I think the last most accurate sim was right around 10,000 feet, which is also pretty crazy for that big of a rocket. But it is going to work. Not if it works, it'll go 10,000. It's going to go 10,000-ish feet when all seven motors light and it works fine. And then all the recovery gear works again. And then maybe this time it won't even get drug a quarter mile through the dirt and pick up 90 pounds of dirt. One can only hope, right? All right. So, those... That's gotta be pretty tacked up. Yeah, nice. I love CA, dude. Make sure that's straight. Those all look pretty good to me. So let's get a little preview here. Some red maxing. Uh, if you missed the beginning of the last stream, I don't have the coupler, so I have to get one. But uh, here, let me pan you guys up a little bit so you can see the whole shebang. Look at that. That is a red max. I'm going to let that stuff tack up a good little bit uh, just so all the stuff that's left over alongside the fins has time to dry. And then we are going to mask it off and do all six fillets at once with West Systems. And I have to go get some stuff to mix that epoxy in. I'm going to put this right here. And, uh, let's see. Maybe I'll put you guys on another sneak preview so I can go get that stuff and run to the restroom real quick. Let's get you rolling here. Oh man, we're at 11,999 subscribers. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please hit the button. We're going to hit 12,000. That means we only have... What? I didn't finish engineering school. I don't, I don't have this math on deck. 38,000 to get to my goal for the end of the year. Yeah, that's right. Sue me. Okay, let's see. What do we say? I don't know. I almost want to give you guys like a... Hmm. You know what? I'm feeling generous today. We'll give you another portion of the fails. But I'm going to skip past the deuces wild, even though you guys can just go watch that so let me add this source real quick window capture add source add source boom all right i'm gonna mute my mic run to the restroom real quick and go get some stuff to mix this epoxy in and then we will be on our merry way to phillips for now enjoy some rocket fails ahead of release schedule
And we're back. Look at that. Magic. Alright, how many people are still hanging out here? I didn't even realize I like put the camera too far down for you guys to see me as well as what's going on here. So let me make a slight adjustment there. There you go. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to use monumentally oversized popsicle sticks to mark this thing for fillets. And then we're going to use it to make the fillets. So, get the Sharpie. I actually used these on the Mach 2 as well. But these are hilarious. Look at that. Conveniently sized for rocket use though. I think I have another Sharpie in here. An actual one. Full size one I guess I should say. Guess not. So what I like to do is uh, get some marker going on whatever we're going to be using for filleting both sides of it and just lay it on extra thick as much ink as you can I like to use sharpies because it dries quickly and then we just kind of follow our fillet path and then we leave some nice sharpie lines to follow with our tape for our fillets and I'll be honest with you guys about 90% of the time I do the first set like this and then just eyeball the rest of them those look like some pretty respectably sized fillets probably a little over half an inch each direction And like I said, we are doing all of them at once. So let's get all of them masked. I'll give you guys some insight on some hardware I bought today since you guys are cool and watching the live stream. Um, I'm thinking about selling my desert fire 1080 case up there just because that one is brand new it's never been fired i'm not a collector i don't i don't like having stuff that i don't use and i could just use it but part of me thinks i should just go ahead and sell it to somebody who appreciates it in the collector's perspective and then from there I can just uh, have different 1080 case because I have a regular black Aerotech one sitting back there and then I also have a Rousetech one coming that I bought off of the rocketry forum today however the other part of me is like well if I get one more then at some point down the road I could fly four J570s on the Honest John which would be nuts and it's not really in the budget right now, 
That doesn't mean it won't be in the future, right? So, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? It would be cool to do four J570s because that motor hits so, so hard. It's a great motor. That's why I'm putting two of them in the Hojo. I don't have enough hardware to do four of them right now, so I'm also doing two J350s. This is, of course, you know, let me use this guy right here since I made that too short. Pause. Right like that. Good. Rough estimate right there. Good. Put this down over here. Good. I think there's one that I missed on the frontal pieces. I'm working on a composite warehouse Prometheus 3s for a winter build. Nice, my cousin has the 4 inch one. Uh, he just bought a 5 inch Punisher to do his level 3 with, but uh, he's building that 4 inch Prometheus. And I think he's flying it. He's planning on like an M1315, assuming his level 3 goes well, I believe. Because he just bought a 6400 case during Black Saturday. Okay. You need to stay in there. Oh. I missed a piece of tape right there. Right there. And yes, I was just feeling the wrong thing. That's fine. Oh yeah, Taylor, Taylor has his rocketry channel almost ready for announcing. So get your subscribing thumbs ready because <laughs> Taylor is about to drop his high power rocketry channel. He bought a very nice camera and the footage he's been shooting has been very good of launches and he's building some pretty crazy rockets. Uh, fifth scale Nike Hercules, true two stage with five motors. And then uh, a seven and a half inch Big Daddy with the same motor mount combination as my Honest John. So he's gonna have some pretty cool projects coming up. I don't know how much epoxy I'm going to need. I'm going to say probably four pumps of West Systems will do it. Cause they're not super big fillets and if I'm kind of, patient with the distribution of that epoxy it should be pretty okay <sighs> need a can of sorry I just blew right into the mic I didn't even think about that saw a bunch of dust on my laptop I just got this guy that's how it goes when I buy things okay the old lighthouse dilly dip container. I'm going to do five just for the safety's sake. If we have a little extra, we have a little extra. It's not uh, not the worst thing that's ever happened. Let me get the smaller stick to mix it with. For some reason, I like to mix the epoxy like very thoroughly before I start putting filler in there. It doesn't really make sense, I don't think, because it's not like it's not like mixing the filler in directly is gonna make it less homogeneous. I don't know. Is that even the right word? 
I think so. I don't know, man. I dropped out of college. Oh, no. All right. Hold on, folks. I have a solution for that. Good thing we got that long epoxy pot life. Are we back? My battery life is full. Did that work? Oh, come on. Let me switch to this camera for a second. Hey, all right, let's go back to the other one. See if it works now. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Try this old trick. The old IT reset. How about there? Oh, don't do this. Come on. Okay, I guess we're uh, to the laptop camera now. That's unfortunate. Wow, a lot of stream issues off the bat here. Um, I put a new battery in it. It just, uh, I think it's because I didn't, I need to cycle the program that I'm using for the live stream and in doing so I would end the live stream. So we're not gonna do that. Unbelievable. Okay, so now I know that even with the camera plugged in, it can die. Weird. Let me try one more thing, actually. Let's try this. Since we got time to kill with this epoxy anyway, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, it should show the Sony logo. And then, what about now? No? Okay, well, we tried. Let's try that. Sorry, bear with me here, folks. Wow, what a travesty. It has like this weird process where it wants you to start it in auto mode, then set it to movie mode. I don't know what that's all about. We tried. Back to the laptop camera. All right. 
Oh well. You guys aren't going to be able to see what I'm doing very well from this angle, but I guess I can uh, kind of give you the idea. Camera's mad at my hat. That's a good point. The Polaroid hat with the Sony gear. You might be onto something there. Okay, so I'm going to start adding colloidal silica. Let me see. Move some stuff around and maybe tilt the camera down. Super overexposed. There we go. That's a little bit better, I guess. You guys can kind of see what's going on. Let me lay the mic down. Sorry, bunch of noise. There we go, you guys should be able to hear me okay. Now, let's see which light is blowing that out of proportion here. Nope, not that one, I guess. I do it with a wired connection, but I don't really have that option. Option. Um, at the moment so let's see yeah okay you guys can still hear me cool 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 all right let's make these fillets <laughs> you can see very bubbly west systems loves to do that um it was a topic of discussion when i did my 54 minimum diameter that i called scaredy cat because it was all these little micro bubbles that like to appear in West Systems, um, people were talking about how that's going to make it fail. And actually, what I like to do with uh, West Systems a lot of times, if I'm worried about that kind of thing, is I'll mix it all up and then put my filler in it and then spread it out thin on a paper plate. And like let it off gas. Oh no. I hear myself. I keep forgetting that we have YouTube Premium and it'll just keep playing stuff in the background. So my phone's just repeating everything I'm saying back to me. We're gonna need a lot of this stuff. I'll show you guys how I mix it and keep it smooth. Taylor likes to turn his into cottage cheese. So I just kind of mix around the middle. Let it slowly start working in. There's no rush with this stuff, especially when you use the slow hardener. Unless it's like humid and 100 degrees outside, then it doesn't matter. If it's in this small container, even if you use the slow hardener, it's going to go fast. We had one like humid day a couple years ago when I was working on my iris and I was putting carbon fiber on the coupler. And I went to dip my brush in the cup of West Systems epoxy and it was cured. I was like, what just happened? It was like 15 minutes. But you can see it eventually sucks itself down in there and then we'll start mixing a little bit faster. I grew very patient with mixing epoxy, doing chopped carp, because that stuff to get it where you want it is a nightmare. Okay, I'm going to pull it off the camera's view, sorry. You'll still kind of be able to see what's going on. I want to make sure I got it all mixed into my content before I add some more, because it will just keep thickening. Till you get it all broken down. We got to make it pretty dang thick since we're doing all of them at once. Because obviously I don't want it to run. That's looking pretty smooth. Okay. Not 
not re receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. What's going on, man? What is happening here? Come on. Are you kidding? Come on. Let's see if that wants to work. Are we back? Man, it just wants to be a pain. Are we still live? What's happening here? You guys still got me? Is it better now? What's happening? I know I'm trying to delete it. There you go. No, that's not. There we go. All right. Camera still so blown out. Jeez. This is a disaster. I just wanted to live stream building my rocket. I'm gonna run an ethernet cable next time. This stuff's getting pretty thick. Oh boy. Try to avoid that. Getting little exploded fountains of silica everywhere. might even need to add more on top of that. This stuff gets everywhere, by the way. In case you haven't used it yet and you're planning on it, just mentally prepare to have this stuff all over. The nice thing is you just blow on it and it just never existed. Still gotta add more. I don't think we're going to need to add much more though. So here's my technique when you've got a lot. Spoon at. We're going to put another heaping spoonful right there. Lean it all to one side. And then kind of just fold it over. Like taffy. Or something. I don't know. And then once you've got it started to blend that way you don't aerate it everywhere trying to mix the stupid thick epoxy and stick brace loose and send silica flying everywhere sure you can tell by the tone of my voice i've gone up and down that path a few times That looks pretty acceptable. I want it to be able to dangle and not drip. It's got a little bit of a drip there, but once it's shaped into a fillet, I don't think we're gonna have an issue. I might just add just a little tiny bit more for my own peace of mind here. Once you have it thick though, be careful about how much you're adding because a little bit goes a long way once it's thickened up. You'll see with that tiny scoop how big of a difference that makes. And I am very meticulous about blending it up, like I said, because I just don't want it to be lumpy when I get my fillets done. I like to just be able to just do a quick sanding pass and then call it good or like I said in this case in case you missed it what I'm planning on doing is letting these fillets start to tack up 
and then I'm gonna come back in here with a glove on my hand with some some denatured alcohol just kind of use my thumb to refine the shape because this rocket's not getting painted that's looking good there you go see how much of a difference that tiny little scoop made that's not going anywhere oh, no stop with the internet issues okay oh, come on why we gotta do this I've never used this stuff before so we're about to see how it goes okay here yep see what's happening I'm fond of admitting my mistakes so you guys can learn from them too here's a pro tip if you want to live stream don't have your VPN on How are we doing there? Is it going all right? I'm a little bit afraid of this stuff. I guess I can't make it too black. It's only gonna get a certain amount of black before it just won't go any blacker. Okay, let's see. I don't even know how much to add. We'll start with that. Usually black dyes go pretty far. Oh, that's just gonna make it look like JB Weld. And that it does. Let's go for some more. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Oddly enough, I'm like super paranoid about adding stuff to my epoxy that isn't a filler or whatever so I'm like how much do I need to add but what's like the minimum I can add but uh, we're gonna do a couple more we'll, we'll a couple little drops there and we'll see if it wants to get any darker than that if not that's fine that's pretty black did use quite a bit but there is also a ton of epoxy in here keep in mind that I did five pumps of West systems okay so now let me open the broadcaster make sure you guys can see what's going on okay I'm gonna use my filleting box. You guys did just see me try to put that lid on the screw cap. It's been a long day. Now the question is, yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Thank you. box 
bucks might not be worth the hassle here. We can do it like that. That'll be fine. I know you guys aren't really going to see what's happening here, but you guys have seen me do fillets plenty of times. So, I'm just going to start laying this stuff in here. It's so weird. It smells like West Systems, but it looks like Proline. That is a lot. That looks pretty good though. I'm gonna throw a little more up front and do a second pass on those guys. At least on this one. The other one's not too bad. Instincts say leave it alone, and then Brain decides that's not acceptable. Okay. Good. Oh. Alright. Hey, that's not bad. There's like no depth of field with this camera. I wish the big camera was working. But... <laughs> How did I have this? That lid in it. I just don't want to touch my fillets to it. Can I get away with this? Oh, gotten it close, but it's okay. It's doing the thing. Get my plate. Get that thing back up here. Put my big stick over there. Get it out of my way. The Death Black West Systems is just so bizarre. I am not used to it in the slightest. There's a little bit of CA puddle there. Um, I can't tell if it's dry or not because it's too shiny. But if it's not dry, you guys are going to see what CA does when you put West Systems on top of it. It makes what I can only assume is fairly toxic smoke. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good. Ooh, that one's gonna drip. Hold on, let me save it. Way too much epoxy. That's fine though. I'm trying so hard not to get this epoxy on anything because I know it's black dye it's not gonna come off if I do get it on anything oh no 
it don't drop it on the desk. Oh, there's a little bit on the desk. I managed to get the pro line or the yeah pro line off of it, so hopes are fairly high. I'll be able to do it with this too. Wow, those are consistent and nice. Look at that. It's like I know what I'm doing. Almost. Um. on the end of this masking tape. I don't want it flipping on everything. Last set. Make sure you want to put it on the fillet there. It's drying. Okay. Greetings from Minnesota. How are you doing? Yeah, I made way too much epoxy. But, you know, these things happen. I'm so used to just making absurd amounts of West Systems now that when I make small batches, it seems like it's impossible for it to be enough. Especially after the 12 inch Punisher, where each fillet had six pumps of West Systems epoxy in it. <laughs> I was also going to, just for the fit and finish of the, you know, building a whole rocket in one day concept, put one of those aero packs on here, but, um, I don't have any JB weld. I thought for sure I did, so I need to get some, because I have another JB weld project coming. And you know what? It's been an hour and 40 minutes, so if you're watching this, I'll let you know what it is. I am doing a sub-minimum diameter K455 built only with JB Weld, fins straight to the motor case. Oh God, I don't want to touch anything. The fronts of those ones need a little help. Just a tiny little dab of epoxy is all we need here. Remember that I am not sanding these, if I, as long as I don't have to anyway, if I really mess something up, I might have to, but I'm not planning on it. I'm planning on coming back after a couple hours with a denatured alcohol soaked finger and refining them a little bit. But that is it. That's all the fillets. Look at how much epoxy I just wasted. That's enough to do another set of fillets on one of these rockets. I don't have anything else to use it for either. Ah, oh, wasteful. This stuff's expensive. Damn it. All right, well. It is what it is, folks. You live and you learn. Now, we're going to start very carefully removing this tape. A nice 45 degree angle. Um, oh no, don't do that. Okay, that was close. Please hold still, Rocket. If you don't know about the whole alcohol covered finger trick, you could even, I could do it right now. If you get enough denatured alcohol on a gloved finger, it basically turns West Systems into epoxy, and you can just kind of reshape it but you have to make sure you keep your finger covered in denatured alcohol because the second you run out of enough denatured alcohol for it to have the effect you want 
you start pushing the epoxy into oblivion, make big lumps and stuff. It's not ideal, so. bit of an ordeal here. Come on. I'm trying so hard not to get black epoxy all over the airplane. I'm gonna have to sand it all off. Oh, that's so unsatisfying. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Big hello from Oregon. Wow, what altitude are you expecting that to hit? Um, jeez, I don't know, man. It's pretty dang light. Um, I don't think it would take a K-185 maybe maybe like a k615 just because it would get it over with so fast but i mean i don't remember how high my cousins went but he did a j500 i want to say it went like 3500 but I, I can't remember for sure if i'm honest with you let's take a look at oh i did it i did the thing i touched the black epoxy take a look at those fillets if you can Kind of make them out. Not too bad. Just need some refining. And uh, actually, what we can do here. If you don't know, um, denatured alcohol gets cleans up epoxy better than anything I have ever experienced. My dad and I have syringes that we use for injected fillets. Wow, I just put that right in one of the fillets. Awesome. Oh boy, don't do that. Good thing it dries fast, huh? We, uh, we had some syringes we used for injected fillets that we used for like six years because we just ran denatured alcohol through them between fillets. So we finally lost them, but we used them for a long, long time. Here's a perfect example I can give you now that I messed that fillet up. Take the denatured alcohol very carefully. Follow the line of that fillet. Just pull it up and out of there. the other side there you go boom never happened that looks pretty good black whisk system is kind of cool there you go do some it's almost like sanding denature alcohol Shaytar woman. Oh, there you go. Ran out of de alcohol de nature there. Okay, refine those leading edges a little bit and we're gonna let those tack up more and then we'll come back with a glove, some more denatured alcohol and get her done.
wish your other camera hadn't cut out. I do your trick with fillets, but can never get the leading or trailing edge around it. It's up. Oh boy, let me get another rock out so I can kind of demonstrate the idea. Ooh, those are looking a little lumpy. It's all right. We'll get them smoothed out once they dry out a little bit. Um, it's just uh, let's see. I don't have a filleting tool. I mean, this isn't exactly the best example because you know there's tip to tip uh -huh. carbon, so the fillets look really nice because they're covered in carbon. But um, we'll just say. I don't know, man. I don't have anything in here to use as a fillet demonstration. Let's get another one of these big popsicle sticks out. Let's point this guy down here. The way I get the rounded edges all nice is, you know, when you're following the path, when you get to the end, you got to pull it around like that. Bring it around town. So you're following your path there and then drag it smooth, pull it out little flick at the end gives you exactly what you need there man this carbon almost looks so good i just need to figure out the clear coat and get this looking better because this is sad this thing is bulletproof though i have a friend who wants to test that with a 98 millimeter o a little sketchy but it is it sounds enticing oh no Okay, I need to wash my hands and tell you what, it has been almost two hours on this second stream, but uh, still 16 people watching, cool. Um, if you're still watching, please hit the like button. We got 27 likes currently, Let's see if we can get that to like 35. I don't know how many people watching have already liked it, but hey, thanks for uh, tuning in. Um, I really want to do more streams, but clearly I'm going to need to get, uh, my connection wired for doing that. And, uh, I guess put a nice fresh battery in that camera or we might, we might go to the GoPro cause the GoPro doesn't die when it's plugged in. I didn't know that was an option. So at any rate, thank you guys for watching. Um, this weekend, double header, Saturday is part one of the fail compilation, Sunday is part two of the fail compilation. If you want an ugly rocket sweater or any Rocket Vlogs merch from rocketvlogs.com, use the discount code HOLIDAY for free shipping, and I believe you have to order it by the end of tomorrow or the end of the 11th to get it for Christmas. I was supposed to have my sweater delivered yesterday, and it still hasn't even been shipped, so they're pretty behind. So uh, if you want something, get it now. Give yourself plenty of time for it to arrive before Christmas. For now, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.